Let's start today with promised measures from the airline industry to make traveling better for people with disabilities and questions over whether those changes will go far or not. Kamal Kara is the Minister of Persons with Disabilities. She joins us now. Hi, Minister. Pleasure to welcome you to our show. Thanks for making the time. Good to be here, Vashi. I wanted to start off on the airline summit and more specifically people with disabilities whom we've spoken with who have expressed some deep disappointment that your government didn't impose any additional penalties on airlines which do mistreat Canadians with disabilities. Why are you willing to simply hope they do better? Look, I think first and foremost, like let's recognize the fact that I think all Canadians um, expect airlines, particularly at, you know when they're traveling, to have a safe and dignified way when they travel, um, and that is the bare minimum, right? And I think, as you you said rightfully so, you know over the last few months and years, we have seen unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable instances where persons with disabilities uh, were treated. You know, not only did they receive you know the barrier barrier free services that should they that they should receive. It was actually, quite frankly, they were treated so poorly, and that's not a, that's not a, acceptable. Um, and I think we were really clear with both Minister Rodriguez and I that treating persons and passengers with disabilities with respect and dignity while traveling that's not optional, um, and and everyone needs to do a lot better. And I will tell you, um, we had really robust discussions, and I think it was a very important step in the right way. Where people, uh, I think everyone committed to the fact that a lot more needed to be done together. Uh, certainly at the short we certainly committed to make sure that there are a standardized uh, intake form for persons with disabilities um, and as well as you know better data sharing uh, we recognize that you know there isn't a consistency when you know airlines when they share data not just with us but there needs to be open and transparent way how they share data uh, for persons with disabilities I can tell you uh, this summit was an important step it's certainly not the last step as we continue to make sure we're doing all that we can to ensure uh, you know people with disabilities you know get the best treatment but, possible but when I, they're traveling. I think the point, Minister, is that you're not doing all that you can with, with, with respect, because when you talk about, for example, uh, everybody leaving with, with a, a, a change or a, uh, an acknowledgement that they need to do better, there is nothing that ensures that. They're going to share data better about how they are mistreating Canadians with disabilities, but you have not levied any penalties if they do so. Why not? Look, I think uh, Minister Rodriguez and I were very clear that everything is on, is on the table. And we had every major player at the table from CATSA to CBSA uh, to the airlines to the air associations, the unions, and everyone understood that a lot more needed to be done. They insisted that they're going to do within their own uh, uh, institutions to be able to do that better. Uh, I know some of the airlines will be putting forward the, the mechanisms that they're going to be putting forward. Um, but I think it's really important right now that we're focused on working together. For the first time, we had everyone together at the table where they got to hear directly from people with disabilities with their lived experiences and got a strong commitment from airlines to do better to make these changes uh, and I think that's what not just you know that's not just what Canadians with disabilities expect I think that's what Canadians expect at large uh, and we intend to see these updated things that we talked about uh, um, you know, th which they committed to publicly to do better uh, to, to to make sure that but everyone what does, uh, what, what with great respect Minister, what does doing better mean that that's what I'm unclear on what how long are you going to give them to do better how are you going to measure what is doing better because I'm not devaluing you know the, the you know the, the place of conversation and everyone getting together I understand that you've also the, the the committee the House Committee of Transport has spent the last four months listening to 28 witnesses all of whom express the dread that they feel entering Canadian airspace not American not European Canadian airspace this is a Canadian problem your government does does have the tools available to itself in order to force the airlines to do better and you are unwilling to. Why? As I mentioned, I think both Minister Rodriguez and I were very clear that everything is on the table. But I think the conversation yesterday was actually a very positive and a collaborative one. Uh, you know, people came out of came out of that conversation committed to doing better. We're going to be making sure that they're doing that work. And I will tell you, the discussion there was very collaborative, and and we expect them to do better because that's what Canadians expect. And I can tell you, we are absolutely committed to making sure that they do that work together. Uh, but it was a really what good. What will you do though? What will you do, Minister, if they don't do better? Look, 
I think we expect everyone to do everything within their own jurisdictions to do better. I can tell you that's something that we came out of that conversation yesterday in a very positive and in a collaborative manner. Uh, where everyone realizes that that's not a, a, that's not acceptable what has been gone, gone on for far too long and everyone is willing to do those changes. Before we go, Minister, I wanted to ask you about another issue under your portfolio. That's the Canada Disability Benefit that you introduced in the federal budget. Your government promised back in 2021 that it would, quote, reduce poverty amongst persons with disabilities in the same way the Guaranteed Income Supplement and the Canada Child Benefit have reduced poverty among seniors and families with children. Do you honestly think $200 a month will do that? Uh, Vashi, for, let's take a step back and recognize the fact that for the first time ever in Canadian history, we had a federal Canada disability benefit, a statutory benefit. And in this budget, we put forward $6.1 billion uh, to ensure that more than 600,000 low-income persons with disabilities uh, get that extra support that they need. Uh, this is going to significantly, you know, this is $2,400 tax-free per year in the pockets of some of the lowest income uh, persons with disabilities for their essentials. We recognize there's more to do. This is an initial step that we put forward and absolutely we are committed to doing more. I like the work that we've done, such as Canada Child Benefit, like the Guaranteed Income Supplement, to really build this social safety net around you know, some of the most vulnerable in our community. We're absolutely committed, committed to doing that work together with the communities. But at this, one of the most important things that we need to do, Vashi, is to make sure that provinces and territories do not claw back any of the benefits that we're putting forward. And yes. I'm very... I do want to ask you about that in a moment, but I just have to ask you very bluntly. Uh, I think to a number of Canadians with disabilities, I have yet to find a single group that advocates for them that has not expressed profound disappointment in what your government has put forward. Is it not insulting to them that you're almost congratulating yourself for giving them $200 a month? And it's your government that set the expectations that it would lift them out of poverty. How does $2,400 a year lift anyone out of poverty? Vashi, again, I think it's important to recognize the fact that for the first time ever, we have a statutory benefit, a benefit designed to support some of the most vulnerable uh, individuals in our communities. But it doesn't do that. It doesn't do that, Minister. They've been incredibly unequivocal with your government. You set the expectation it would take them out of poverty, like the Canada Child Benefit, like the Guaranteed Income Supplement, all of which provide so much more money than this but then this uh, benefit will. The, the GIS, for example, more than $1,000 a month. The CCB, $620 a month. This is $200 a month. How Gosh. will this do any of what you promised it will? Vashi, this is an initial step. We recognize there's more to do. And just like all the other progressive benefits that you right, rightfully pointed out, these are meant to grow. This is expired to be expanded and enhanced. But we will not do that on the face that provinces and territories can claw back the benefit. My biggest priority right now is to make sure we're working with provinces and territories. And we made it very clear to them and we expect them to make sure that there are no clawbacks with the other provincial benefits that individuals with disabilities get. This benefit is intended to be a supplement, is not a replacement uh, with the other um, benefits that, that it, in, individuals get. At the same time, to see what more we can do together to support some of the most vulnerable in our communities. I mean, people who are vulnerable have told you exactly what they need, the amount of money they need in order to be lifted out of poverty. Are you telling them today that the reason you didn't provide them with that kind of a benefit is because you thought provinces would claw back theirs? Look. My job is to make sure we support and we continue to enhance, this, you know, build on this social safety net that we put forward for some of the most vulnerable in our communities. I can tell you since 2015 that we have been in government, since I can remember, we are a progressive government that has been there to support, whether it is, you know, through Canada Child Benefit, the supports for seniors, through workers' benefit, to really create this social safety net. We are a government that for the first time ever put, a, put together a, and, and passed legislation for Canada National Canada Disability Benefit. Six but don't those people billion. deserve the same thing absolutely that seniors they, do, uh, that, absolutely. Uh, that can, absolutely. people with children do? Because they are absolutely. telling you that you are not giving them that with this. 
absolutely Vashi, and we are there to support them. This is an initial step that we put forward. $6.1 billion, one of the single largest you know, line item in this budget. This is a first initial step. We recognize there's more to do. $2,400 tax-free per year, uh, you know, per year for, for some of the most vulnerable people that live in deep poverty is not on that significant and that's so not it, even it, rent it for in most cities right now absolutely there's month. more to do there's absolutely more to do at vashi and that's exactly where we're committed to um, that's why in this budget we have had and as a government we put forward you know through dental care program or pharma care program these are all affordability affordability measures that we have put forward i can tell you uh, the work that we've been able to do to move a dial on disability inclusion when we passed the accessible canada act then move forward and that created a disability inclusion action plan to first and foremost put forward supports for persons with disabilities uh you know through employment, we're working towards an employment strategy. We have millions of dollars that we have put forward through the Opportunities Fund, through the Enabling Accessibility Fund, working alongside these disability groups. And I want to take a moment to also thank them for the work that they've done to get, it through, to get us to this point. There's a lot more work. This is not the last step. This is, a, you know, this is one I'm of not, the most yeah, I'm not important trying to say your that we've put forward. I'm not trying to call into question your, your intent, Minister, or your government's actions so far, but those disability groups that you point to universally have called your government out for how woefully inadequate this benefit is. You say that you're prepared, that this is just a first step, but the budget looks six years out. That's $6 billion you're talking about. It's over six years. Then you've allotted $1.4 billion a year thereafter. Is that just an estimate, or are you planning to spend much more than that? As I mentioned, Vashi, this is an initial step that we put forward, $6.1 billion that is going to support some of the most vulnerable 600,000 lowest income persons with disabilities. We're absolutely committed to grow. These benefits, are, as has been mentioned in the budget, are aspire to grow like the other you know, benefits that we have put there for to support some of the most At vulnerable in our communities. Uh, we're going to continue to do this work. That's what we're committed to, and uh, we're going to make sure we get this right. Minister, I'll leave it on that note. I appreciate you making the time for the conversation very much. Thank you.